the elusive subplot. Let's talk about it. Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you like writing advice videos, consider subscribing and give this video a thumbs up if you've been waiting for me to finally do a video on subplots. Don't hate me, it's taken me a while. Subplots can seem scary and like they're a little difficult to make work in your novel. You know what you want to happen, but everyone's telling you subplots, subplots, subplots. It often requires a lot of planning ahead of time and figuring out how to weave in a separate story into your main story without getting things confused, which makes it intimidating and causes a lot of writers to just outright avoid it. If they just so happen to write a subplot, then whippy, that's good enough. But subplots are deceivingly simple. That's not to make all of your worry and doubts seem invalid or silly though, because subplots are something that everyone worries about at some point. I'm gonna break down what a subplot is and then help you come up with a few ways to add some relevant subplots. First up, what is a subplot? Subject. Subplots help us to better understand the main character, their motivations, how they react in certain situations, what they think is important in life, their flaws. Subplots are side stories that help us get to know the protagonist a little more before the big bang happens at the end. A subplot has to have a beginning, a middle, and some kind of resolution, just like your main plot. It's a smaller, cuter plot. Cuter. Maybe not cuter, um, cause they can get ugly. <laughs> just smaller. For this reason, it needs to have its own story arc. If you're missing a piece of the arc, the subplot may not feel like it's important to the story, which is not good. The resolution must affect the main plot. Even if you're just showing character development here and it's nothing major that you think is major, your subplot needs, needs to affect the main plot to be totally relevant to the story. I mentioned this a second ago, but the subplot ties back into the main plot by the climax. That's essentially when your story ends. Everything after that is just wrap up or setting up for the sequel. The subplot strengthens or weakens your character, which affects their performance during the climax. So it needs to happen by the climax. You can still have subplot wrap up happen after the climax, but the lesson learned and the impact needs to happen before the climax. Now that we understand the gist of a subplot, let's move on to the practical portion. The portion probably a lot of you are waiting for. How do I find subplots to add to my story? This is one of the most common questions I get concerning plot development is about subplots. How do I come up with subplot ideas? Here are five questions for you to think about when trying to answer this question. More questions to answer a question. That's totally not confusing. <laughs> Number one, what is your protagonist's relationship like with their family? In a lot of stories or books or movies that aren't dramas, there's not much focus on the family. There may be some focus on romance or spouses, but what about extended family? What about their children, their siblings, their parents, grandparents? You can use that information to highlight a different side of your character by adding meaning to a flaw that ends up affecting the main plot or that the character has to overcome by the climax of the story. And let's face it, I mean, it's realistic that your character's flaws might stem from familial issues that they've been dealing with for years. Totally believable. Number two, is there a secondary antagonist to the main plot's antagonist? This is a character that adds more obstacles for your protagonist, but ends up mentally or physically strengthening your character for the final showdown with the main antagonist. Keep in mind, this secondary antagonist can't take over the main antagonist's degree of opposition to the story. They're a hurdle, an exercise to help your character get ready for the climax. Wait, an antagonist that helps the main character? What? Okay, my... Laptop recording my microphone just died, so things have probably changed. Great time for my lighting equipment to start buzzing. <laughs> the universe does not want me to record today. Let me turn off that light. Okay, 
Let's try this for the third time. <laughs> okay, so I probably moved a little bit. Anyway, I'm now recording. By the way, I, I finished this entire video. So yeah, let's do it again. At least I'm halfway through. All right, how they end up helping can be obscure, but without their encounter, your protagonist may not be brave enough or confident enough in their abilities to face the main antagonist at the end, even if they don't have any wins with the secondary antagonist, even if they just have a bunch of fails. Number three, how's their love life? Romantic subplots are likely the most popular subplot to have ever been called a subplot. Your character already has so much going on right now, and now may not be the time to fall in love, but guess what? It's time, buddy. More drama, more tension, more stakes. More stakes, higher stakes. That was dramatic. <laughs> I talked about this two weeks ago in my Game of Thrones example, Rob Stark. His story is drastically altered by his romantic subplot in the third season. Of all the times he could have fallen in love, he fell in love immediately after promising himself to wed someone else. Romance changes the game and can change what your character believes is important. It can turn best friends against each other, or it can be the motivational impetus for the protagonist to stand up for what they really believe in. It can be good or it can be bad. Number four, how can the past crop back up? This is a relationship that started before our main story takes place, but comes back to bite the character, the main character in the butt. This can be um, family, it could be a jilted lover, a childhood bully, a dog that always chases your main character out of the neighborhood for some reason. It could be anything. This type of character or animal or thing really, because it could also be a ghost for all I know, serves to show us a glimpse of your protagonist's past, which brings a deeper meaning to what's happening right now. And the timing in your main character's life is key here. This thing didn't come back as an issue until your character started on the main story's journey. It wasn't a problem before, but now it is. This represents another flaw or disadvantage that your protagonist must overcome before the climax dealing with past issues. Number five, what is your story's prevailing emotion and how can you balance that? Add contrasting emotion in a subplot both to give the reader a break and to highlight the prevalent emotion without going overboard, the main one that you wanna focus on. Are you writing a dark, scary book? Add some romance or comedic relief. Are you writing a family drama? Add a hint of horror or a relationship that's totally drama-free and easy. Your story can't be go, go, go all the time because when something really big happens or surprising happens, your reader is gonna be numb to it. This is also an opportunity to see how your character reacts to a situation completely unlike the main problem or goal in your story. All right, that's all I have for today's video. I hope this was super helpful and comment down below your favorite subplot, either to use in your own writing or to read about. I'm sure it will give somebody some inspiration because there's a million subplots. Signups for my newsletter are down below, including a newsletter for my upcoming writing courses. <clears throat> Discounts will be sent out specifically to this newsletter once the course launches. Course discounts. My voice. Purchase links for my debut YA Dark Fantasy are down below, and if you would like to suggest a video or to vote on your favorite idea, the link for that is also down below. I'm really, really sorry. My voice can't take much more. <clears throat> also, I said down below a million times just now. Yeah. All right, until next week, bye guys. Also, if you're a vocal coach and you know what the heck I'm doing wrong, please let me know.